So let me actually uh, go to the pre-lab and uh, kind of look at what I thought you would need, uh, possibly need a little bit of help with. So when you look at the pre-lab, uh, actually good chunk of the pre-lab is uh, something that uh, you already have enough help with. You've done kind of homework question on it already. Um, that has to do with questions two and three. Those, I think you already have enough help if what you are doing is you are expressing your answer not in terms of period, but in terms of velocity instead. If that's what you're doing, then you already have enough help. Let me just point you to that explicitly. What you have help with is, you know, review section 6.3, centripetal force. And one of the examples is actually quite uh, closely related to the scenario you see. I mean, it's not uh, literal um, something on a rotating platform, but when you look at this example here, um, what coefficient of friction do cars need on a flat curve? The free body diagram you see is basically identical in that you have normal force, you have friction force, and you have weight. And it's the friction force that provides the centripetal acceleration. And when you uh, go through this example, you have, oh yeah, we know that centripetal force must be that, mv squared over r, and that is more or less the answer to question two. Um, now, so that's what I mean, if you're expressing your answer in terms of V, not period. So, and then um, um, in part B is where, um, so I think because the question is asking what coefficient of friction do cars need? So they are drawing connection between, or they are using this connection between the friction force and centripetal force. So first, um, from knowing that the maximum static friction force is this, they need the normal force. That's where they look at this free body diagram to draw the connection, oh, normal force should be equal to weight. So normal force is equal to mg. So putting this together with that, they get the centripetal force, which is equal to friction force, is equal to this, um, and that's equal to mu s mg. Uh, plug in centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. You end up with this expression here <laughs> where you can cancel out mass. So you end up with mu s is equal to v squared over rg. And as I was saying before, if uh, what you have to is express this in terms of um, v instead of period, then you can basically draw parallels from this example to uh, wrap that up. So, so for questions two and three, if you are expressing in terms of the velocity of the object, then you have enough information there. What I thought you might need a more explicit connection drawn is um, for the scenario where you don't know the velocity of the object, let's say that's not given quite explicitly, but like the scenario in the pre-lab, you, um, you are given the period instead. So if you, uh, after having answered the question one, you should actually have um, that information already uh, because the question one is getting at, uh, if you have an object which is moving at constant speed of V, then, um, you know, how do you express the period in terms of V and R? And, uh, you know, let me just give you the answer first and then I'll show you where in the textbook that answer is. If you have, all right. So, 
period, uh, the answer should be, let's see, the period is the distance traveled per speed. So it should be 2 pi r divided by v. Or if you need to solve this for v, then speed is equal to 2 pi r over p. So for questions 2 and 3, if you have an expression, um, if you have an expression for centripetal force in terms of V rather than period, then you can plug this in to get an expression in terms of period. So having given you the answer, let me show you where in the uh, where in the textbook you can find that information uh, so that I'm not just giving you the answer and leaving you there. Oh, you know, I probably should have linked to it uh, directly. Um, let me do that as soon as I'm done with this uh, uh, virtual class session. So uh, it, it's the uh, section of the textbook that we are adjusted now uh, in chapter four. So in chapter four, um, there's the section on uniform circular motion. And in that section, um, this is what you are saying. Um, so, you know, here's the derivation of centripetal acceleration. And the second subsection is getting at uh, what equals equation of motion or the mathematical description of uniform circular motion. I think this is something that you could have possibly seen in your trigonometric class or uh, maybe your pre-calculus class. So, uh, this is what it calls equation of motion. And what, it is, what this is meant to do is, yeah, what that is meant to do is you imagine an object which is undergoing uniform circular motion. Then what this is, describes is position of that object as a function of time t. Then what that, a there stands for, that's the radius of the circle. So at time equals zero, you can see that cosine of omega t is, omega t is zero, so cosine of zero is one. Sine of omega t is zero. So at time equals zero, position of this object will be on the x-axis at a distance a from the origin, or that, yeah, let me draw that, at a distance a from the origin, or this A is the radius, cap, what I've been labeling capital R. As time increases, um, the position of this object changes from uh, this point here to along, it moves along the, this uh, circle to, it will reach this point when omega t is equal to a quarter of a circle, so two pi over four, or you know, pi over two, or 90 degrees. So when omega t is equal to pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero, that's why it's x value is zero, and sine of pi over two is one, that's why its y value is a now, um, one times a is a. So um, it's there. And then as time continues to increase, so that omega t increases beyond the pi over 2, then it increases past here until um, this is where uh, omega t is equal to pi. So cosine of pi is minus 1, as you might have seen in your um, pre-calculus or trigonometric class. And then uh, as uh, omega t continues to increase up to 2 pi, um, the position of the, the x coordinate and the y coordinate uh, continues to change until it reaches this point here. So I guess when it comes back here, this is where you can say, yeah, that's what it's saying here. Um, you can say that the time it takes to make one full circle, you can call that time period, uh, or the label they're using is T. So omega times capital T, 
that should be equal to 2 pi, one full circle. Or uh, what you would be saying is um, the period t is equal to 2 pi over omega. And this omega is uh, what we call angular velocity. And um, hmm. I want to, let's see, I think your textbook might actually go over this, uh, how omega relates to V. Um, yeah, it, it does draw the connection. Um, oh, I, I think this is uh, what I want to highlight. Um, so your textbook does uh, this much derivation. Um, uh, because this is kind of a piece of information that's useful for you to know for your lab. Uh, it, your textbook draws this much uh, connection here. The centripetal acceleration, uh, when you look at the magnitude, is equal to the magnitude of the radius, or r, uh, times omega squared. And I just want you to highlight these two different expressions for centripetal acceleration. You have one that's derived up there. Centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared over R. And you have this second expression here in terms of this uh, angular velocity. Centripetal acceleration is equal to R times omega squared. And these two expressions are actually related to each other. And the way they are related is through this, that the tangential speed is equal to the radius of the circle times the angular velocity. So, so um, yeah, so this is where you can kind of draw all the fun relationships between these different quantities related in circular motion. So from up there, I wrote before that period t is equal to 2 pi over angular velocity. And here's one fun thing I can do. I can take this here, the expression for expression that relates tangential velocity to angular velocity. Solve it for angular velocity, say that that's a V over R, and imagine plugging in that there, then period is equal to um, 2 pi over V over R, or simplifying this fraction, 2 pi R over V. And that's uh, the uh, expression that you saw me write down earlier that period is equal to 2 pi r circumference divided by the speed. So, so yeah, I think that covers all the uh, information that you need to know.